أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما واجعل التفرق بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تدع فينا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم امين in the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى the most compassionate the most merciful all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he who is guided by the will of Allah no one can misguide him and he who is misguided no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I do bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh subhanallah by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we started the first session of this series in the 6th of July 2021 Last time we finished chapter Al-Baqarah, alhamdulillah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So about three years and one month just for Surah Al-Baqarah. <laughs> well, I did not expect that, so by the will of Allah. Today, I will make a quick review. I will be just choosing and highlighting every five to ten sessions, which I'm about an average every two months in one session now, just to try to fix, because this is the biggest chapter in the Quran. And it contains maybe one of the most important thing in the Quran. But it's a quick review, inshallah, in In case if you were not with us, at least you will have an idea. In case if you were with us, inshallah, you will fix. Because repetition will fix the information. And please let me remind myself and my respected brothers and sisters. يعني our main aim from such a session is to spread the knowledge. Because it's a duty in Islam. It's a sacred duty, one of the greatest, greatest acts of worship is to spread the knowledge. We have tens of hadith about that. So, in case if you have the time and you are listening, my job is to convey what Allah has enabled me to know in the last 42 years of my life. Because I've been fully dedicated to learn and teach Islam since 1985 officially. It's about 39, 40 years. None officially since I became religious 1982. <laughs> so about 40 years, alhamdulillah. So in case Allah enabled me to be of some help to anyone of you, please, once you received it, it will be your duty to convey it. <laughs> so please, in case if you are from those who attend always, Please do your best, like the brothers now, to have a notebook. Write notes, review them, try to summarize. Later, you will discover that you have an accumulative knowledge. This, once it's increased, you will have some kind of clear concepts. You will be able to do something. Do something, please, okay? This is second duty. One of the things that Allah praised uh, this ummah with is that our miracle is knowledge Quran others miracles it was tangible assets physical things the she camel of Qawm Salih for example the split of the sea for Musa alayhi salam and his people you know bringing death uh, dead people from earth to Isa alayhi salam and you know the list goes on and you know it we are the only people who followed Muhammad وسلم, Our sacred mu'jiza was not a physical one. It was knowledge. It was a scripture. It's a book, a revelation. So therefore, the first word that revealed to Muhammad وسلم, was Iqra. It was not usjud, prostrate, or u'bud, worship. Because if you don't know, you will not rightly, correctly worship or do the right prostration. We might... God forbid be from Maghdub alayhim or Adalin, those whom Allah has cursed or those whom Allah became so angry from because for many reasons. Anyway, right. now quickly, um, uh, I reviewed about seven to ten sessions last night, which I will give you one of the most important things we did three years ago. First, number one, point number one, what we have said that the importance of the Qur'an for the Muslim. Why Qur'an is important for us? For many reasons, just to keep, fix it in your mind. Number one, it's the seal of the messages. The end of the revelation of heavens to humanity. Be careful. This message under our hand, it's not our personal property. It's not our own software. We don't own it. It's a trust. We must convey it. So it's very important. The number one. 
Number two, it contains the cream of all previous messages. All the core points that Allah decided to address prophets and messengers who preceded us are inside the Quran. How do you discover this? Because Allah, while he's addressing us, he's telling us what he used to tell Noah, Idris, Abraham, Jacob, David, all of them, which is the core point, core point, core point. أَمْ كُنْتُمْ شُهَدَاء إِذْ حَضَرَ يَعْقُوبَ الْمَوْتُ إِذْ قَالَ لِبَنِيهِ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِي Allah is telling us, when death came to Jacob, what was the most important thing? Jacob, the father of Joseph, the most important thing, he's living the life now, after a long life, with, with, with a lot of stories. But do you worship after me? He was not discussing what kind of kingship, piece of lands, inheritance, uh, business. No, 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 no. This is most important before I leave. Your direction where? <laughs> do you worship your hawa, desire, yourselves, your tribe, <laughs> your government? Or Allah, we do worship your God and the God. This is the message is why it's the cream of what everything happened. So it's good to know why important is, uh, why Quran is important. What else? It's a book of guidance and it's a system of life. Book of guidance, system of life. Guidance of how do we go to our creator. Guidance to what? Because linguistically you can be guided to anything. Someone is guiding you to... By the way, we have people who work as voluntary for free. Guides to the hellfire. Do we have those people or not? Serious, I'm asking. Do we have guides to the hellfire or not? Yes. Anyone who's encouraging you to do haram or to, to, to rebel against your Lord is guiding you to the hellfire. Quran is guiding you to your Lord. Simply. Type, it's a system of life. In this context, very quick pause. I'm just reviewing now. When I say system of life, you have to know that we do not have anything has to do with the concept of secularism in Islam. It's, it's not ours. This product, this item, this object is a stranger when you speak about Islam. It's a European, Christian, European problem. It has nothing to do with the Islamic understanding. Islam on the top of Islam is Quran, then the prophetic way, which is the Sunnah, which contains what the Prophet Sallallahu said, did, acted upon, reacted, had an attitude. All of this is a system of life. We are not detached from anything else. Politics, part of Islam. International politics, part of Islam. Business, part of Islam. Money, part of Islam. Our privacy, part of Islam. Marriage, part of Islam. Clothing, food, drink, relations, love, hate, wala, bara, all of it, part of Islam. So we don't have, the, why Quran is important? Because Quran is the book which contains the most important guidelines of your system of life. So when we start, before we start tafsir Quran, we need to know what is the value of this book in a very quick review. We did that in two sessions at that time. Now in five minutes, okay? Time. Another point. You need to know when, what does distinguish Quran, this is a new point now, from other books, because we believe in other books. <laughs> By the way, one of our basic pillars that we believe in, the previous scriptures, true or false? We believe that they did exist and we know their names, but we don't believe in what does exist now. <laughs> we believe they are not valid any more. Time. What distinguish the nowadays scripture, i.e. our Quran from nowadays books from our point of view? Okay? Nothing was changed. This is what we believe. I'm not discussing how to prove it. I'm discussing what should we believe in. Okay? This is how to prove it, this is another approach. We did it many times. But just what is the difference? I believe others are corrupted. Point. Full stop. Point. Finished. Corrupted. How? This is another question. Not valid anymore. Islam, uh, Quran is the only book that is still reserved completely. And you have a lot of details under that. Third point. 
Did Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam make a tafsir, interpre interpretation or exegesis for the whole Quran? The answer is no. Why? Because the Quran comes under different categories. Some of the Quran, they don't need tafsir because <laughs> it's very clear. It's, it's a clear direct Arabic that anyone can understand. Okay? Anyone can understand. Some other ayats, you need to understand them to know what we call sabab an nuzul which means the reason of the revelation. The reason, by the will of Allah, Allah decided when the Quran was revealed on the span of 23 years, He decided to make like a connection to let some of the reasons be superficially. Once they happen, he revealed some ayat. Understanding the reason will help you to understand the core point. However, once the ayah or the hukum or the teaching or the verdict was sent, it has a new way of dealing. We call al-ibra bi'umum al-lafdla bi khusus al-sabab. Which means, once this verdict or teaching came, it became a general rule. However, to understand it thoroughly, try to understand the reason when Allah ordained to come at that time. Okay? So, in general. And one of the ayat that tell us, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, and some of the Quran, to understand it, you must, you don't need Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi but you need Arabic language. <laughs> so, therefore, not anyone can do Tafsir Quran. If you don't know Arabic language, I'm not saying you cannot read the Quran. I'm saying don't do Tafsir for the Quran. <laughs> it's a big difference, okay? Which means don't do Ijtihad if you don't understand Arabic. <laughs> Keep it for yourself because this is one of the dangerous things. If you want to be a Mufassir or someone who has some kind of good status to enjoy conveying the message of the Quran, if you don't have Arabic with Full respects, full respects, stay behind. <laughs> don't put yourself in that because the harm that you might do if you don't understand Arabic language, it's, 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 uh, you can't imagine it. You can't imagine it. Time. Another point. Fadl tilawat al Quran. We did fadl, which means the virtue, the ajr, the status, the prestige, the. the, the how you will be a great winner when you do the recitation of the Quran because we will deal with the tafsir and understanding. We said many, many, many hadith at that time. One of the top of them, just to fix it in your mind, غشيتهم الرحمة وحفتهم الملائكة وذكرهم الله في من عنده. Now the meaning I will be mentioning two great hadiths. One of them, any group of believers, Muslims, they gathered in one of the houses of Allah سبحانه وتعالى, reciting the book of Allah and doing تدبر or دراسة, trying to study. It's like exactly what we do now. The book of Allah to understand what is the message of Allah for the people. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will قال إلا وغشيتهم الرحمة Now they will be covered with mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala حفتهم الملائكة They will be surrounded by the angels as an indication of the satisfaction of Allah and the blessings and the ajr and the thawab قال وذكرهم الله في من عنده They will be mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala In a way Okay, the angels, the, those great beings with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is one of the great things. Another hadith, to finish this point, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, قال من قرأ آية من قرأ حرفا من القرآن من قرأ آية من القرآن كان له بكل حرف عشر حسنات لا أقول ألف لام ميم حرف بل ألف حرف ولام حرف وميم حرف Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi while he was encouraging the Sahaba to read the Quran, he said, every single letter, the alphabets, okay? While you read the Quran, you will be having 10 rewards for each letter your tongue utters. He said, I'm not saying alif la meem as a harf, no, no, alif as an alphabet is harf, which means alif la meem, you will have 30 hasana. 
It's an amazing, beautiful, encouraging way to keep connected with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another point. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. As part of the tafsir, we have something called Ulum al-Qur'an. The sciences of the Qur'an. Now, Ulum al-Qur'an is, is a very special areas of knowledge scholars they did as tools to understand the Quran okay I will give you one of the most well-known let's say topics in the field of the sciences of the Quran when you speak ulum al Quran we are talking about what examples one of them is asbab al nuzul reasons of revelation this is one of the sciences of the ulum al Quran al makki wal madani when we speak the Meccans and the Medani. now there's a some misconception about Makki and Madani people they think Makki means anything was revealed in Mecca Madani anything was revealed in Medina actually no Makki means anything was revealed before Hijrah <laughs> before immigration Madani means anything was revealed after migration depending on this understanding ayat that came for example in Sulh al Hudaybiyah which was on the borders of Mecca. Is it Mecca or Madani? It's Madani because after <laughs> Hijrah, okay? This gives you an idea. But what's the reason? It's a great science because it gives you about the graduality of the legislations in Islam. What happens at the beginning? Later, because before that, they were oppressed. After that, they had the power and the state. A new era in the existence of the Islamic power. So, you need to understand. Type another type of the science, Ijaz al Quran, the miraculous aspect of the Quran. It contains the linguistic or rhetorical Ijaz or miracles, contains the historical, contains the scientific, which means now how Allah is challenging the people. If you don't believe that this book is from Allah, now, 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 nowadays, now we are living that. So, Quranic verses is still challenging the people with what it contains from what we call now the applied science. And by the way, just very quickly, Quran contains 6,348 ayah, verse. About 1,000 of them, they revolve around what we call now a science. It's not a book of science, it's a book of guidance. However, it contains scientific indications and knowledge just to prove to you that this book is from God. And you remember how many of you, you heard the, the story of Richard Vardy from me? Because I did it, I think, 3,000 times here. I think. 3,000 or 3,200? Richard Varley. It's, it's <laughs> well, I myself, I said, three, please, go to YouTube and write, Richard Varley, three verses led me to Islam. Okay, read about him. Oh, sorry, listen to him. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Now, al nasikh wal mansukh. Nasikh wal mansukh. Non Arabs. Anyone from the non Arabs. When you hear the word nasikh wal mansukh, do you understand what that? Arabs, please don't speak. One person. Two. Yes, sister. Yes, mashallah. Yes. Nasukh Mansukh, the abrogation or the abrogated and the abrogator, which means we have like a previous and latter, an ayah that comes after an ayah. Anyway, this is a, a great field of science if you want to study it. I'rab al Quran. You know, the grammar of the Quran, because we have the tongue which is part of the grammar. Of, by the way, Arabic language, it has rules, gram grammatical rules. Quran came to be like the umbrella of Arabic language. <laughs> so the grammar of the Quranic Arabic has the superiority and the upper hand in which we sometimes derive from. And by the way, because of the Quran, Arabic language was preserved. preserved because of the Quran. If Quran did not exact, uh, exist with what we feel, because you know, languages are like, like uh, living beings. When you are in a very difficult political situation, your language will go down as well. Wallahi, unless Allah preserved 
our language with the Quran, we are lost since two, three hundred years. Khalas, finished with our language. <laughs> Maybe many of us will speak the, you know, a mix of languages. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He preserved this language because this language is the language of His book type. Another one, Rasm al Mushaf. The way of the Mushaf is written, Mushaf Uthman in specific. You need to know that. We have a specific science about how the Mushaf of Uthman was written because the way that it has been written goes in parallel with Qiraat al Quraniyya, the different styles of recitation of the Quran. Like for example, for example, Prophet Muhammad read, which is part, by the way, Qiraat al Quran is part of the Quran. It's not different, you know, it's part of the Quran. For example, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, Maliki Yawm al Deen, Maliki Yawm al Deen, Malik the King. Malik, the owner. <laughs> okay, the two Qiraat. Now, the way how it's written, it's written Maliki with a very small alif on the top. So this Qiraat Malik and this Qiraat is Malik. So it contains both. And because two different meanings, they gather together. Uh, Jama'a, Jama'a. The meme is the same with Shadda, without different meanings, but they go together in addition. Ya Nuhu, Allahumma salli alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad, Qala Rabbi inna ibni min ahli wa inna wa'adaka al-haq. It's at a call, Ya Nuhu, innahu laysa min ahlika, innahu amalun ghayru salih. Fala tas'alni ma laysa laka bihi ilm. Ya Nuhu, innahu laysa min ahlika, innahu amila ghayru salih. Fala tas'alni ma laysa laka bihi ilm. Different. I'm sorry, I will not stop by each one. Just quick examples. Okay? Type. This is part of Ulum al-Quran. Allahumma salli alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad. Qiraat. The different styles of recitation. Some Ulum al-Quran. And the Tajweed. And Al-Fasil al-Quraniyya. Who knows what is Al-Fasil al-Quraniyya? Arabs. Now it is for Arabs. Who knows what's Al-Fasil al-Quraniyya as a terminology in the sciences of the Quran? I don't blame you if you don't know it because it's a very specific terminology. But in case. No one? Al-Fasil al-Quraniyya is a special terminology. It means the specific Quranic style by the ending of the ayat. For example, you come to ayah, Noon, Wal-Qalami wa ma yasturoon, Ma anta bin ibad rabbika majnoon, Wa naka ala khulukan azim, Why in, 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 for example, okay? This is called Al-Fasil al-Quraniyya. The end of each ayah in a surah which separates Fasil between the last ayah and the next ayah which goes in parallel as a sound with the end of next ayah. For example, وَالضُّحَا وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَا مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبَكُ وَمَا قَلَا وَلَا الْأَخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ بَالْأُولَى Why? This is special science. الْقَارِعَةُ سَلَى رَسَلُ مَحَمَدُ 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 إِذَا وَقَعَتِ الْوَاقَعَ لِوَقَعَتِ الْكَاذِبَ خَافِضَةُ الرَّافِعَةِ إِذَا رُجَّتِ الْأَرْضُ رَجَّةُ وَبُسَّتِ الْجِبَالُ بَسَّةُ فَكَاتَ بَأَ مُنْبَثَّةُ وَكُنْتُ مَزْوَاجًا ثَلَاثَةُ فَأَصْحَابُ الْمَيْمَانَةُ مَا أَصْحَابُ الْفَاصِلَة Al-Fasila literally, literally means comma. You, you see, comma, when you write, for example, comma. <laughs> but, but it's a terminal, it's a special terminology. It does not uh, mean exactly the literal meaning that you hear. Tayyip. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. This is one of the most well-known of the ulum al-Quran. Now, <coughs> Rasm al-Mushaf al-Uthmani. It's part of the things that we know. Now, I need to remind you this point that I will say with some quick good details because it's, it's a very dangerous, important point. I did it, but I'll do it very quickly now. When you speak about the written copy of the Quran, which is the Mushaf, okay? And we call it al-Mushaf al-Uthmani, okay? Or Rasm al-Uthmani, and we say, 
especially some Orientalists in the West, the last six, five, four, three hundred years when they were very active in writing books about Islam for the European audience, they kept saying the following doubts. They say, look, you Muslims accuse us that we used to have hundreds and tens of anajil, which is Gospels. And we had just four Gospels. But you have the same problem because you used to have many Qur'ans and Uthman burned all of them and he made his own copy of the Mus'haf and you call it Mus'haf al-Uthmani. So what's the difference between us? You know this? No one is better than anyone. Yani. <laughs> we are the, on, the, on the same page. Yani. What's the fun? If someone does not have the knowledge, he will accept the no knowledge. Whatever, you, you, blank sheets, whites. Whatever you throw will stick. So therefore, always when you are equipped with knowledge in advance, you will have a shield. When someone say, hey, hey Habibi, I, I, do you know what you are talking about? <laughs> I know very quickly when we speak about the concept of tawatur this is a special Islamic terminology means that we have a 100% assurance that the literal recitation of the Quran as was given from Allah to Archangel Gabriel to Muhammad وسلم, to the Sahaba to us is exactly what we are reading now we believe and we received it through a specific way, channel of narrations that when Muhammad Sallallahu said Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim it was said to him by Jibreel Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen exact sound, exact order, exact spelling 100% up to Qul A'udhu Rabbil Nas Taib Okay Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Now the first message in this our biggest strong assurance of receiving the Quran orally, not in a written form, be, be careful. So our tawatur is depends on what? The oral. However, in the side, Prophet Muhammad used to have special writers for the Mus'haf. At the beginning, at that time, people they did not use the paper as in our time. They used different means to write on, such as the bones, for example, the shoulder, of the bone of the camel or a piece of wood or a leather or stones this is in different ways so they used to write on different means so it was as such after the uh, Muhammad uh, passed away sallallahu alayhi wasallam thousands of sahaba used to memorize the Quran so we have no problem but the written copy it was just in this form different means now at the time of uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu they copied all of these different means into one unified means on a leather at that time the Quran started to be called Mus'haf the first time the Quran was called Mus'haf which means okay, a book in a unified way of written form at the time of Abu Bakr one copy but be careful Thousands they memorize it, which is a phenomenon that does not exist on earth in any nation. That's a piece, and by the way, some people are saying, What's the, the, uh, the, the strange thing of the miraculous out of the Quran? Yes, no nation, they have millions of their followers who memorize literally a book of 93 or 94,000 words. And by the way, just one, one thing to prove how Quran is mu'jiz understand that if I told you if I told you uh, by the way is there anyone who speaks French here fluently French fluently number of time anyone who speaks Chinese fluently Mandarin Chinese Dr. Yasser you are speaking Ghazawi <laughs> Chinese <That's>, uh, please <laughs> imagine that imagine that this brother does not exist with us <laughs> none of us knows the French and none of us knows Chinese. If I came to you and you know that I don't know to speak not even one single word in Chinese or in French, yet I memorize a book of 610 pages in French poetry. 
contains 94,000 words in French. I memorize it by heart, not even one mistake. What do you call this? And I don't speak the language. This is what happens in Pakistan, for example. Pakistan, to the best of my knowledge, 25 years ago, 25 years ago, they used to have 12 million half of the Quran. They don't speak Arabic. <laughs> they don't. I mean, can you imagine? Yani, when you hear him doing the, uh, the uh, recitation, you think he's from Mecca. He's from Qahtan and Adnan. When he turns around, Assalamu alaikum, كيف حالك يا أخي? Oh, Assalamu alaikum, well, I'm sorry, I don't speak Arabic. What? But, Quran, no Arabic, nothing. Am I exaggerating or you know, you know these, these cases? The same thing applies people from Senegal, from Mali, from Nigeria, the same thing. From China, they don't speak Arabic, but they memorize the Quran. How come? When you see the Quran, 94,000 words, literally not even one mistake. If you can't find, this is a phenomenon. And we have millions. 12, 15, 12, 20 millions in Pakistan. 20% of Libyan population, they memorize the Quran. There used to be 5 million 20 years ago. 1 million of them, they memorize the Quran. This is what I'm, I'm talking about. So you need to, because if you think that, oh, this is just a historical dream. No, Habibi, still it's now. We have millions who memorize it now. <laughs> what I'm talking about at that time, you need to know this. Why? Because it will get delve into your conscious by spreading the doubt of you used to have copies of the Quran and they were burned. You know, that's the context. No differences in the Quran, thousands they were memorizing. This written copy, Later, when the time of Uthman radiallahu used to have one copy, look what happened. Here is the, the core point. The Islamic conquerors for, you know, they were fighting other nations who were fighting them, defending ourselves and saving, saving oppressed people in Persians and Romans. So thousands of new Muslims, non-Arabs came to Islam. The natural historical reality. But non-Arabs, they have just become Muslim now. How do you think their Arabic recitation of the Quran will be? Make an analogy to our day-to-day days now. Now, what used to happen? Look, for example, one of the Sahaba, one of the Tabi'een, one of the other, he was teaching them. Okay, he taught some of them. Now, imagine that I'm a Persian, or I'm a Pakistani, or a Ghani. I'm an Afghani now, for example, I'm from Afghanistan. Someone came and taught me the Quran. Okay, I realize the Quran, but when I recite it, I make a mistake. Instead of saying Alhamdulillah, I might say Alhamdulillah or Alhamdulillah. The Europeans, they say Alhamdu. Some other Eastern people, they say Alhamdu. So the Ha does not come easily. It's either Ha or Kha. My kid is listening to me and he wants to write a copy for himself to memorize the Quran. How am I reciting the Quran? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So my kid will write his copy, Alhamdu instead Alhamdu. طيب. For example, Allah says, Waladhalin. I might say it, Waladhalin. Za or Waladhalin or Waladhalin. So I will change by the pronunciation. Anyone who's listening to me, if he decided to write his own copy, will make the mistake. By this, people who are still not educated, the new Muslims, wrote their own copies as they recited. And they did mistakes. Okay? Still, we have thousands who memorize it and hundreds of thousands correctly from the Sahaba and from the Tabi'een and from the followers of the Sahaba. So, when Uthman heard that they told him the people they are making mistakes in their copies, he decided to do seven or eight copies from the original copy. He sent it to what they call Al-Amsar. Amsar means the main capitals of provinces. At that time, Al-Kufa, Baghdad, Mecca, Cairo, like this. So original copy was taken from the copy of Abu Bakr. If you want to have your own copy, come to the house of the governor of the province, province who represents the Khalifa. Write your copy under supervision. 
Don't write your own copy. All other copies, burn them. Burn them because they will make mistakes. The original, everything is still preserved. <laughs> this incident was taken by some orientalists. They say, you see, you burn thousands of differences of the Quran. <laughs> no, Habibi. <laughs> no. Clear? This is very important. Very important. Because if not you, your kids, through the TikTok, through the Instagram, they will heal this. Some revert or some those who committed apostasy, they come attack, you know, Quran, blah, 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 blah. So if you don't have a knowledge, this could make some doubts in your mind. Anyway, sorry, sister, you raised up your hand. Yes. It's not just him, the Sahaba around him, all of them, but it was, the vision was clear. They burned everything because if they left them, you know, you know, next, third, fourth, fifth generation, they might use it mistakenly. So, khalas, that's it. That's why we have, by the way, from that time, we have many copies around the world now written. But still, our main dependence is not the written copy. Be careful. We have a unique thing in Islam. Unlike others, others, if they don't have this scripture, no connection, no chain of narrators for us, even if we don't have a written copy, we don't care because we memorize it. There's a big difference. Unlike Jews and Christians, it's, you know, copies. Latin, Greek, 500 years, 600 years, Latin written, X-book, no, no, for us, it's not a big deal. But just for the sake of argument, this is the case. But it's preserved by millions and millions. But what is the nowadays the evidence? Challenge anyone. Go listen to the recitation of the Quran. Bring any half of the Quran in any African country now, a kid of 10 years in Senegal, playing in the streets. Hello, are you half of this? Read the Quran. Okay, tell me. For example, repeat after me. Mm, go travel with your airplane, private jet, go to China. Find another kid 10 years playing in Shanghai. Okay, go. hello, are you half of this? Read the Quran for me. Not even single change word. Go to Norway with a new Muslim convert. He became a Muslim hafal. Ask him. Go to South Africa. A new Muslim new convert. Go wherever. Challenge. Same. How come? Give me an explanation. And by the way, you need to educate yourself to a degree. When someone is throwing a doubt, don't keep yourself in the status of a defender. Attack. Tell, look, this is a reality. You give me an explanation. How do you explain this? Ah, no, no, no. Give me an explanation. How come now all of these people around the world, they have the same copy orally? You give me an explanation. I don't care. If you don't care, don't waste your time. <laughs> I will not waste my time with you. If you are seeking the truth, this is an evidence for you. And this is a simple evidence. Anyway, I'm sorry. I, I, I was planning not to go in details in any point because I witnessed a new faces. And this is a big doubt because I know it's a big doubt. Many people, they start having, developing doubts against the Quran from such points, unfortunately. Time. Now, another point. Alhamdulillah. <clears throat> One of the things that I did in the past three years ago, which is the warning of the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْكِتَابَ مَهْجُورًا The title of my talk in this point which means the warning of be careful not to be under this threat. Allah is threatening us and warning us. Be careful that the Prophet at the day of judgment will say, Oh my Lord, my people has left the Quran, Mahjura. Hajar, which means they forsaken the Quran. Just they left it behind their backs, which means they don't care about it. Which contains in the first level, they don't recite it. More, they don't understand it. More, they don't apply it. <laughs> this is in the Quran. Ya Rabbi inna qawmi attakhadu hadha al-Qur'ana mahjura. So be careful not to be from those. Which means, do your best to be connected to the Quran. You must be connected. You just need to have a word. 
at least this is the bottom line reading recitation more tadabbur and qira'ah and interpretation and understanding and when we speak about tadabbur call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he explained this at that time afala yatadabbarun al-Qur'an the word yatadabbar from the word dubur dubur al-shay' fi al-lughati al-arabiyya akhirahu the end of the thing yani brother Muhammad from Egypt Muhammad al-Qadi how do we translate hatm al-akhir Ah, seriously, I mean, what is the equivalent to Hatm al Akhir? Hatm al Akhir. Seriously, I'm asking. Straight to the point? No, it does not work. No, it does not work when you speak about Tadabur and to find it. Now, the word, the word Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Afala yatadabbarun al Quran. Allah say, why, how come that they do not reflect upon to do tadabbur? The word tadabbur does not have exact right equivalent in translation. But the literal meaning, tadabbur from dubur, dubur is the end of the thing, which means Allah is encouraging us, don't just read the superficial meaning, go to the core point behind the message. You are not just enjoying the beauty of the sound, okay? For example, wadduha, والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلا ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولا سوف يعطيك ربك فترضى. Now what's the meaning? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling his prophets, Allah is swearing by the time by Muduha that he did not forsake him, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is reminding Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم also this is the quick superficial of what else? Nothing else. لا حبيب إلا else. The way how Allah designed the language of the Quran, Allah is addressing you now. For you. مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَكَ وَلَلْأَخِرَةَ فَلَا بِأَلَا جَيْتْ كَيْتِيمًا فَأَوَى So when I read the Quran, it has in two tadabbur, Ya Allah, Allah is talking with me now. Have I not supported you and took care of you when you were orphan? طبعا I was not orphan. طيب وجدك ضالا فهذا how many of us we were misguided and Allah saved us from misguidance so now we do تدبر wow I'm reading Allah is telling me oh my servant have I not saved you this is how you do for example simple level of تدبر and sometimes you go beyond beyond in the depth in the depth in the depth this is part of the meaning of تدبر طيب اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد by the way, what I have done so far, uh, it took me at that time five sessions. So about seven hours and a half <laughs> at that time. Because every single point, it took me a lot of details on that. Today I just did. Then after that, alhamdulillah, we started with Al Basmala. And we say, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, which means Bismillah in Arabic means. قال, بسم الله أبتدئ قراءتي متبركا بسم الله مستعينا به which means by the name of Allah seeking his blessings and his support I start my reading therefore therefore I mean in Islam for Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said in a hadith قال كل أمر ذي بال لا يبتدأ فيه بسم الله فهو أبتر Who understood this from the Arabs? Except the Ghazawi people. Because they're speaking behind the screen. I can't, I can't hear you. Kullu amrin di balin Arab. Wallah, I think I need to give Arabic lessons for the Arabs now. Kullu amrin di balin la yubtada'u fihi bismillahi fahuwa abtar. Ah, sorry? مقطوع يس يس جميل literally it says anything that has a value if you do not start with the name of Allah it will be disconnected it will be cut off as if 
metaphorically, it will, be con it will not be connected with Allah. It will be disconnected from the blessings, from the support, from the barakah. So be sure not to start anything that has a value without saying Bismillah. That's why part of our religion, when you eat, you say Bismillah. When you get home, Bismillah. When you get into your, Bismillah. But when you, 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 many, many, many things. Bismillah, Bismillah, Bismillah. Which bismillah. means I seek, I ask the barakah from Allah and what I'm doing. Type. And after that, and by the way, one of the things that we explained at that time, that it's highly recommended not to start reading any chapter when you, you recite the Quran, any chapter, but to start with Bismillah, except one chapter. What is it? A tawbah. Why? Yes? Bara'atum min Allahi wa rasulihi ila ladhina ahadtum Because it's declaring the, the, the disconnection and the anger of Allah gone against those who broke the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So it does not go to start with the rahmah of Allah Allah is declaring war against them <laughs> Subhanallah Generally it's highly recommended to start any chapter Taban, we have some dispute between the fuqaha is al-basmala uh, part of al-fatiha or not this is another issue now it's not my my, my topic then we started surat al-fatiha allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described al-fatiha and i will finish inshallah today's session with the, with this point because it's a review every time we review about five to seven sessions from the past why do we Repeat al Fatiha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called Inna Atayna wa laqad Atayna ka sabaam min al Mathani wal Quran al Adi. Allah is describing al Fatiha as if it's something and the whole Quran is something else. <laughs> Look, because al Mathani, according to all the Ulama al Fasirin now, it's al Fatiha. But why Mathani? Because al Mathani means it's the thing that we keep repeating. What is the only thing that it's far you repeat in, in, in your prayer? Al-Fatiha. Anything else is not an obligation. You can choose any verse from the Quran except Al-Fatiha. We repeat Al-Fatiha at least every day 17 times. At least. Without the Sunnah. If you, if you pray the minimum of the Sunnah plus 10, 27. If you pray the Duha 2 to 4 to 8, 30 something. Fatiha. <laughs> if you pray Tahajjud or Qiyam two or four, it's around 40 times a day you keep repeating Tathniya wa laqad atayna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We have given you Al-Fatiha and the Quran <laughs> What? Al-Fatiha and the Quran But Ya Allah, Al-Fatiha is part of the Quran What does this mean? It's a linguistic high rhetorical Arabic style, Uslub Balaghi, to give you the, the, you know, the, the wording, it gives you when, when someone wants to give a special affirmation and importance for something, as if it's something else, because it's very important, even though it's part of the Quran. Why? It contains a special message. So what is the special message in the Quran? It contains the most important things we all need to know. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise and thanks are to the Lord of the worlds. That we start. The first thing after saying Bismillah, I start by the name of Allah. What's the first thing? All praise. Thanks and praise to the Lord. Lord here means the owner. We all belong to. We are part of his kingdom. <laughs> Look, the first one. Ya Allah, I admit I'm part of your ownership. You own me. <laughs> what? Yes, we are slaves to Allah. We are proud to say so. Others, they don't admit they are slaves to many others. <laughs> we are slaves to Allah. Others, they are slaves to their governments. They are slaves to their desires. They are slaves to their parties. They are slaves to their husbands, to their wives, to their money, to their companies, to the reputation. Some people, they are slaves to the likes. 
like 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 TikTok, TikTok, TikTok like 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 slaves. They talk off their hijab and they dance nearly naked because they are seeking the money through the likes. What is this? If this is not slavery, what is it? I'm asking. If this is not slavery, what is it? This is the new type of slavery, <laughs> exactly. So we have the slaves. For us, Alhamdulillah, all present thanks are due to Allah immediately, who is the Lord of the worlds. So we admit that we believe that Allah is the creator and the owner. The owner of what? All worlds. Worlds? What do we mean worlds? We have the world of the malaika, the angels, the world of the jinn, the world of the ants, human beings, the world of the animals, the world of the, the insects. The world of the viruses, the world of the germs, the world of we don't know. <laughs> this is what we know. We don't know what other worlds are. That's why I say, Alameen. We know six, seven times. If the, the sea creatures in the sea, they are billions. And as a species, they are tens of millions. And we did not discover all of them yet, by the way. So, Allahu A'lam, what kind of worlds there are. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the mercy of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Maliki Yawm al the owner, look another time, the owner and Malik, the king and the owner of the Day of Judgment. This is, we repeat, we remind ourselves with it 17 times per minimum a day. This gives you what is the most important thing should be in your life. That's what is very important. طيب. Next, what I'm supposed to be seeking. إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم. Seeking guidance every time, minimum 17 times. Oh Allah, guide us to the straight path. We worship none but you. We keep repeating. And here comes something very important. I repeated it many times, but I have to repeat it. When we speak about worship, ibadah, we are not discussing ritual worship. Be careful. The word ibadah from abada, ya'bud, ibadah, abid. To worship, the literal meaning, the definition of worship in Arabic lexicons, dictionaries, قال الخضوع التام دون أدنى شرط. Any kind of submission to anything without any kind of preconditions is called ibadah. Okay, which means if you submit yourself full without any kind of preconditions to a person, you are a worshiper of this person. If you submit yourself to your desire, you are a worshiper of your desire. That's why Allah said, Have you not seen the one who has taken his desire as his own God? Literally, which means I'm following unconditionally my desire. Right, right, left, left, stop, do whatever without any kind of restrictions. This is al-ibadah. So what's the meaning here, can abud? We declare that we obey none but you. Obey none but you and only you. Which means, Ya Allah, you have the priority in the commandment. Whatever you say, I submit. And here comes the core meaning of tawheed, by the way. And I will finish by this, inshallah. I did it because I'm reviewing now. I said it tens of times, and I will repeat it, and please fix it, and let it be the final piece of information in this session. You know how Tawheed is important in Islam? Monotheism, oneness of God. The core, the simple way to explain Tawheed is, as I say in Arabic, because some people, they keep saying, Alhamdulillah, that we are muhideen. What, what does it mean to be muhid, ya Shaykh? I mean, to believe that Allah is one. This is a big mistake. No, no, it's not just like that. Definitely. And by the way, Jews like us, they believe Allah is one. Are they muhideen? Mm. No, it's a, <laughs> it's a big package. The most important point, we have many points, but the core point of Tawheed, to worship none but Allah. Worship means obey, which means you should obey none but Allah. But obey, what does it mean, Sheikh, in every single aspect of your life? The Muwahid is the one who decided to let every single aspect of his life 
since he start became an adult aware that he is accountable till the moment that his soul leaves his body is doing 24 7 of his actions should be in parallel of what satisfies Allah this is the muhad it's not a feeling it's not a philosophy it's a practical application that Allah is the only one who deserves to be obeyed, worshipped. By this, you know, this meaning is the core meaning of Islam. It's in the first two-thirds of Surah Al-Fatiha. Every day, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawm Al-Deen, Iyaka Na'abudu, Iyaka Nasta'in, Ihdina Al-Sirat Al-Mustaqim. And at the end, Sirat Al-Ladheena An'amta Alayhim, Ghayr Al-Maghdur. It says, Allah, protect us. Show us, guide us to the straight path. Not the path of those whom you became angry from or those who were misled. Many people before us, they either fought their Lord and Allah became angry and punished them still in the day of judgment, or they simply they were misled, simply they don't care. We have a lot of examples. That's why we, and any one of us as individuals could be from those. Do we witness this among Muslims now or not? Now we are witnessing a group of Muslims, they are tortured and killed, and we have traitors who are supporting the enemies who are killing them. So what do you call them? It's either maghdub alayhim or dalleen. <laughs> yes, we are witnessing this now. So that's why we keep, because any one of us could be there, by the way, anyone. Because the fitna, we don't know when the fitna comes. The, the true, the true trial. Because I witnessed many of, my colleagues who studied with me, they are holding PhD in Islamic studies. Wallahi, they sell, they, they sold all of the religion behind their back when a political position was offered to them. I know them personally. And this happened for many of us, you know. I'm talking about Muslims, practicing Muslims. When the fitna comes, he's just a humble, simple, night person, nice person praying in the first line. For whatever reason, hey, Sheikh. Would you like to become a minister? What? Minister? Yes? Okay, thank you. Oh, wait, you have to pay the price for that. Are you ready? What's the price? You throw your principles, your God behind your back. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Minister? Yes, okay. Yalla, throw it. We witnessed this. This is a fitna. Fitna came the trial. Some people, they fail in the test. That's why we keep Ihdinus Sirat al-Mustaqim, Sirat al Oh Allah guide us, oh Allah guide us. Because any one of us was could be there by the way. Wallahi, any one of us. And let's always keep dua to each other. And I'm asking you to dua for, uh, make dua for me, Wallahi. Because we don't know. Because we have fitna in the, in, in the world of politics. We have fitna in the media. We have fitna in the money. We have fitna in business, different styles and places, and you don't know. When Allah, when Allah tests you, whether you will fail or you will succeed to pass through this fitna, we don't know. That's why all the time, Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah, I seek refuge by, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Bismillah, by the name of Allah, all the time, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, protect me, Ya Allah, guide me, till the soul returns back to its creator. And this is, you know, when the end, the end of the story, the new phase of our end will start, inshallah. Zakumullah khairan. Today, inshallah, in about 50 minutes, we covered eight sessions. Now, today, inshallah. I will do my best between five to 10 sessions, which means five to 10 sessions from the previous, because we did 122, 20, 122 sessions, the last three years. So I'll try to cover them in about maybe six to seven sessions, inshallah. By this, especially those who were attending, all the time, please do your best to write notes. And inshallah, you will make dua for me in the future. When you go to your notebook and you see what you have written, you can be, inshallah, with a good teacher. Inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.